Ask any good shooter, what is the most important part of shooting as a skill? And they will say fundamentals. Fundamentals are grip, trigger, aim. Out of all fundamentals, the grip is the most important one. It defines recoil control, directly influencing speed. When shooting at speed, it directly affects accuracy. Set speed at a constant and have a bad weak grip and you will have poor accuracy. Strengthen the grip and accuracy improves immediately. Don't trust me? Watch some Bob Vogel videos or Charlie Perez videos on grip and recoil control and how it basically affects everything. But there's more to grip than just recoil control. Good grip stabilizes the gun not just in recoil, but also during the trigger pull. It's easiest to see in rapid dry fire, especially using red dot and the trigger with a return spring. For example, run a really fast build drill with realistic trigger press, you should be able to see how the dot movement is reduced drastically by applying more weak hand grip pressure. At higher level, grip even influences your aim, being directly involved in improving the quality of proprioception of critical parts of your shooting platform, which are fingers, thumbs, wrists, and forearm. Basically everything you can point with. If you ever heard a term point shooting, that's using proprioception as a method of aim without necessarily using your sights. The better you become, the more proprioception is gonna be used as your method of aim, even at longer distances. And then sights just become precision tool or a training tool to define your proprioception and improve it. Before we dive deeper into the principles and techniques of grip and recoil control, let's take a look at somewhat typical grip progression as a skill most shooters go through. It took me a while to go through these steps, but hopefully using instructions from this video, you won't have to. Typical grip skill progression. First, finger and palm positioning. Second, engaging wrist or locking wrist, pointing thumbs. Third is picking the elbow configuration for stiffness. Fourth is grip strength uberalis, grip it and rip it, crush gun run fast, where shooter realizes that the grip strength is almost the most important part of their shooting platform. And fifth step is full integration. It could be described as grip pointability or as a quality of a shooting platform where proprioception, grip strength, muscle memory all becomes integrated so much that good grip just feels like good hits and bad grip, especially from the start, just feels like a disaster and a destroyed stage. Having this typical grip progression as a context, hopefully instructions from this video will allow you to understand principles of grip and recoil control, develop effective technique, and progress faster than I did. Before we start working on a technique, let's take a look at a few basic physical principles behind grip and recoil control. These are gonna be pendulum, lever, and conservation of momentum. Pendulum is quite simple. It's just a weight suspended on a string, harmonic motion, the principle of a pendulum is if you have pendulum already swinging and you drastically decrease the arm, the length of the string, it will swing faster. When you're shooting a continuous string, you will be in somewhat harmonic motion. Your gun basically gonna cycle back and forth, back and forth, continuously delivering these impulses to your body. If you allow shorter arm rotation at the wrist, this motion will be very chaotic and not allow a good recoil control compared to motion at the elbows and shoulders, then this motion would be much more controllable, slower, and thus allow you better accuracy and better recoil control. Lever allows you to have mechanical advantage and use less force to move more mass. In this case, the lever is the grip of your gun and the force is generated by the expanding gases during recoil. The more lever will allow this force to have on us, the more it will move us. Thus, it is important to go as high on a beaver tail as possible to get as close to position of the recoil impulse to not allow it any mechanical advantage over us. Last but not least, conservation of momentum. Bullet goes one way super fast, but it doesn't weigh a lot. Slide weighs much more and it goes other way much slower. In order to fight this, we need to put more mass behind the gun during the recoil. This is why grip is so important. When you have a weak grip with support hand, this is what can happen. This is bad. But if you fully lock the gun inside of your hands, and now it just moves like this. If you allow movement at the wrist, all you really have is the weight of the gun and the weight of your two palms, which is gonna be approximately 20 ounces for males for each hand. Now, if we lock the wrist or more or less lock it, 
and we add forearm to this equation, that adds us 60 ounces per forearm. So 120 if we're shooting freestyle. Now, if we engage the tricep more and make the recoil travel through our elbow to the shoulders, now we put additional 100 ounces of weight behind the gun for each arm. And of course, if you're really into everything and you don't allow any movement in your wrist, elbows and shoulders, the recoil will go into your body, which is approximately 1500 ounces and really nothing should move at all. If you observe some GM shooters shooting close targets on the move, you will see that their platform stays almost completely static and the only thing that moves is just slide. As you progress through practice and conditioning, the physical properties of your shooting platform will change. Things like finger skin thickness, calluses, deep palm muscles, comfortable wrist and elbow angles, and overall platform length and uh, configuration. This is why it's useful to reconfigure your grip from time to time, adjusting to your newly found strength and picking the most optimal configuration for stiffness and control. Refining the grip. There are four steps for grip refinement and initial setup. They are build, extend, index, and focus. During the build step, we are going to basically blast through the first step of grip skill progression, and we're gonna do it as follows. We're basically gonna position both of our hands on the gun. We're not using a target, we're not even using a clear background. All we're working with right now is the handgun and our hands, and we are looking at our hands. At first, we're gonna position the web of our palm as high on the beaver tail as possible. After this, create grip from front to back, but instead of using a somewhat circular grip, we will use a rather rectangular clamp. After that, we will position thumb on the safety if there's any, or just keep it where it is naturally, and put your index finger on the trigger. During the recoil impulse, when you're shooting, your finger is gonna be on the trigger. This is your shooting grip, because the recoil happens, it's there. It means index finger is applying pressure to the gun and is an important part of your shooting platform. So after we positioned the web and the trigger finger, and now we know that we're providing rectangular front to back pressure on the grip with our strong hand, we can experiment with placing of the trigger finger, more or less, basically rotating the hand one way or another. Just figure out what works for you. You can do some dry fires and just figure out the angle that works. After this, we will open our strong hand thumb, come with weak hand under the trigger guard as close as possible to it, basically slamming into it, create a clamping grip again from left to right. You want some meat of your palm to be contacting the grip of your gun and just holding with the same technique, only with a weak hand. You should be able to cycle your slide quite again. And this is actually a way to work out your weak hand to cycling the slide. Next step is engage your thumbs, not necessarily against the gun and definitely not against the slide, but just kind of pointing them downwards and do it at the same time, increasing pressure on your weak hand and kind of pushing gun just a little bit forward. You should feel like it just starts to lock in place. We're starting to get to step number two, extend. Again, we're not working with target yet, we're not even using a clear background yet. We're still looking at our hands. After you have rebuilt your grip with finger on the trigger, you need to find your wrist and elbow configuration for optimal stiffness and control. Just look at your hands, relax them a little bit, then push them forward and start locking and engaging your tricep. Not necessarily locking, but engaging it. You should be able to relax close to your chest and then combine the grip, wrist, an elbow engagement at the full extension. After this comes step number three, which is basically step number two, but this time you start looking at your sights. And I recommend using a clear background and no target yet. All we wanna do is make our previous steps, the build and the extend, result in sights aligning somewhere in front of you. No target, just sights aligning. If it doesn't happen, you can experiment with your wrist angles, with your trigger finger placement and depth of the index finger going into the trigger guard, or by closing your platform or opening a little bit more, or maybe moving your shoulders a little bit up or down or relaxing them. You definitely don't want to bob your head quite a lot. You want to be able to do build, extend, and have a good index 
and side picture just happen there without moving your head at all. Bring your sights to your eye level, not your eyes to your sights. Repeat this step a few times. Have a good consistent presentation of your sights. At first, some misalignment in iron sights is acceptable. As long as the dot is in the window, again, it's acceptable. It will get better over time. And after that comes the last step, aim or focus, where you start looking at a target. Usually, at first, it's a good idea to start at high ready or even partially extended high ready and relaxed grip. Look at the target, look at the specific spot on the target where you want your sights to appear. We're gonna call this a virtual crosshair or point of aim. Repeat steps one, two, and three and allow the sights to just appear there. If you see your sights, but they're not in your point of aim and you do it a few times and they're exactly at the same offset, this is good. All you need to change now is just your body orientation, which you could do by just slightly rotating at your hips or maybe just making a little step. Things like that. When you completed all these steps, you should be able to at least from compressed ready, close your eyes, extend the gun, and just have the sights appear there. Just you open your eyes and sights are already there. If you do it enough times, you can even sometimes get on the target like this, but if you don't pay a lot of attention or do a, don't do a lot of reps, you will be slightly off the target. And this is okay because the visual aim is still happening. You still need to use it. But recoil control works only when it's passive. Even though if you need to remind yourself to have a cue to grip the gun hard, all that recoil control, all that muscle engagement needs to be happening subconsciously and completely automatic. So this is why it's important to understand that grip is gonna be part of your aiming platform, not just your recoil control. For the best cost-benefit ratio, grip and fundamentals need to be trained and improved in live fire, dry fire cycle. Cycle starts in live fire. We are developing a dynamic, live fire, service caliber capable shooting platform. We are the platform. It's important to understand the strength requirements and dynamics of the recoil impulse in order to improve. If you're B class and above, you have enough experience to start benefiting from these four steps immediately in dry fire at home. But if you're a newer shooter, I recommend that you start with steps one and two at the range in order to avoid developing any training scars. First range trip. Start with steps one and two, build and extend on the range in dry fire. After a few reps, when you feel comfortable holding the gun, go live with singles. You can use only one round per mag if you're completely new and don't feel comfortable or if you're training a new shooter. Don't death grip the gun to the point that it starts to shake or is completely immovable, but optimize for maximum stiffness and control in your shooting platform. Progress through singles, control doubles, and build drill. Six shots on a single target. Further progress can be made by following my other video, Dear Practice 101 Live Fire. Quick note about discomfort and pain. So this is something you're going to experience sooner or later while working on your grip and recoil control. When you're just starting out, use shorter, extremely focused and deliberate practice sessions. Split them a few through the day if you want. Ignore skin discomfort, but try to avoid any muscle pain at first. Generally, almost all levels of pain in the skin are acceptable and can be ignored. Muscle pain should be listened to, but can be ignored up to medium levels. Do understand, though, that higher levels of muscle pain means decreased muscle capacity and might affect your performance during matches and decreased training value during practice. Tendons, ligaments and joint pain is always a risk and shall not be ignored. Any level of TLJ pain will mean decreased capacity. You should work through increasing TLJ pain only in physical therapy, preferably at no higher than discomfort slash tickling levels and under medical supervision. If you can't tell what kind of tissue is injured and experiencing pain, consult with someone who can. Or just YOLO it, you will go down with an injury sooner or later, might as well get used to it. Physical therapy. If you practice enough, you will get some pain and inflammation in your muscles, tendons or ligaments. Best way to manage it is to start PT right away. This is my variation of the spinal flow yoga, tennis slash shooter elbow recovery exercises. I recommend you do it daily and as a warm up before all of your gym and dry fire practice sessions. I like to do bicep curl to overhead press first to warm up the joints. Then I do the wrist flexion and wrist extension using knees as a support. In the gym, I usually do two sets, one of weight of 10 pounds and one of 15, but this will work with weights as low as two pounds. Stretching is your friend, do it often. 
Also, ice water buckets help a lot. Not even full ice bath, but just enough to submerge your forearms. It was hard to get used to at first, but now I do 10 minutes wrist ice baths almost daily. Physical conditioning. Now that we're done with the warm-up and therapy, it's time to cover physical conditioning for grip and recoil control. Word of caution. Don't do grip exercises first and then compound lifts second. This is dangerous, trust me. Dropping a 200 pound barbell on yourself and dealing with reverse cartilage is not fun. I recommend dumbbells for mobility and safety instead of the barbell. If you're an experienced lifter, sure, go ahead. Just maybe test first how much grip strength you actually lose after doing grip specific exercises. Non grip specific exercises Normal, decline, and incline dumbbell bench press. Adding rotation and moving towards center line to engage chest and wrists more. Decline bench press can be done one hand at a time, after or before a quick set of sit ups, to engage core even more. Dips are good for engaging tricep and wrists together. At the top, push yourself further up and lean forward, kinda going into a handstand, to get more wrist and shoulder range of motion. Grip specific exercises. Hammer levering is great for wrist strength, but you have to be careful and not overdo it to avoid inflammation. Start with once a week schedule. The best pure isometric grip exercise that I know of is fat grip dumbbell row. Fat grips and clones are available everywhere and compatible with most dumbbells. Focus on keeping the grip strength constant without touching the floor. The short periods of acceleration and deceleration will be the most beneficial moments for your grip in that exercise. And I think this is it. This is all I know about grip and recoil control after working on it for approximately five years. This information is also available on my blog, Dancing with Guns, in text format at the link below. Thanks for watching, and if you want more like this, even though I hate asking for liking and subscribing, maybe it actually could be a good idea. See you next time.